Neglected tropical diseases affect more than 1.7 billion people. Besides inflicting immense suffering and causing lifelong disability, NTDs often also lead to stigma, inequity, and discrimination with huge mental health implications. Some can be left fatal if untreated or lead to chronic complications. The World Health Organization works with its member states and many other partners, including the institutions that make up the London Center for NTD Research to try and alleviate these problems. WHO's first roadmap was endorsed by its member states in 2011 and officially launched in 2012, which is the same year as the London Declaration. Subsequent scale up of control and elimination programs was impressive, made possible amongst many other things by the generous donation of medicines by pharmaceutical companies and of the funds from many sources, including the UK government. Progress was heartening. Amongst many other successes, 42 countries have eliminated at least one NTD. 199 countries, areas, and territories have been certified free of guinea worm disease. From 2000 to 2018, there was a 97% reduction in the annual number of cases of human African trypsomiasis. From 2011 to 2018, there was a 73% reduction in the number of annual visceral leishmaniasis cases reported globally. And between 2002 to 2020, there was a 91% reduction in the number of people living in districts where active trachoma conferred risk of a future blindness on local children. Much of that progress was made possible by innovations dreamed of, tested, broken down, built up, reported, peer reviewed, edited, published, advocated, and even paid for by people on this Zoom call. I want to thank you very much for all you have done. But of course, it's not enough, and that's why we're still here. Innovation is needed and will continue to be needed until the very last person affected by leprosy the last individual infected with Onkoseka volvulus, the final dengue-bearing mosquito identified and managed appropriately. The mosquito likely being managed in the least nurturing way. Yesterday, we launched a new roadmap for NTDs. It will guide us with periodic course adjustments for the next 10 years. Many, probably most of you, contributed in some way to its development and you may have participated in yesterday's launch event. So I won't talk about it in any at any length. You already know that it sets overarching, cross-cutting and disease specific targets for NTDs for 2030. You know that despite these being evidence-driven, many of the targets are ambitious. They are a long way from becoming a reality. So we do have our work cut out for us. You will also know that compared to the previous roadmap, the 2021-2030 roadmap calls for three fundamental shifts in the way we work. First, it asks that we shift from measuring process to measure impact. This will increase our accountability to each other and to the people we serve. Second, it asks that we change any vertical programming to horizontal programming to ensure meaningful integration at all levels. And third, it asks that we move from a culture in which donors and partners largely call the shots to genuine country ownership so that the programs are country funded, country owned and country driven. In other words, not only are the roadmap targets ambitious, we have committed ourselves as an NTD community towards working towards them in a different, more sustainable, more equal, and in some senses, more difficult way. That's where the need for innovation really comes in. We need to work, to all work together, even more than before, to make this shared vision real. 
Although the WHO has long given priority to health research, it's now well organized and prepared to support advanced priority health research. To support the innovation process, WHO is now embarking on a process to develop a research and development blueprint for NTDs. This will be simultaneously a number of things. It will be a comprehensive document detailing the research and development needed to advance the science and practice of NTD control, elimination and eradication. Though published after it, the R&D blueprint will be a companion document to the roadmap, coherent and complementary to the roadmap itself. The R&D blueprint will be a living document being periodically reviewed and updated to meet evolving R&D needs. And that, like the roadmap it will accompany, it will be a collective work. We intend to be guided by the thinking of the whole NTD community. Academics with NTD expertise like you will clearly play key roles in the process. And I humbly request your help with it. To avoid anticipating the research priority setting process, I won't be outlining any particular NTD research priorities of WHO here today. Instead, the process of priority setting will be led by the chief scientists in our department at WHO. We aim to publish the first iteration of the R&D blueprint uh, in the second quarter of 2021. There is, however, one specific thing about research that I'd like to raise with you. As I've already said, the third shift in the new roadmap is the shift to genuine country ownership of NTD programs. That shift should include moving the center of gravity for research on NTD towards endemic countries. You will all be aware that in most such countries, the capacity for research lags behind. There are many reasons for this, including local scientists having limited access to research support services, weak local career pathways, especially for women scientists, and the legacies of colonialism, such as funding and publishing structures, which continue to favor researchers in the global north. There have been attempts to address these issues, including some specific to NTDs. Some funders, for example, have professionally or exclusively directed grants to low and middle income countries. And I'm delighted that my own alma mater, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, is taking action to try and decolonize its global health work. But much more needs to be done by all stakeholders. The R&D blueprint and how it's developed and implemented will therefore not only be about what is needed, but also just as importantly, the how we get there. In other words, it's not about the scientific questions that must be answered, but also who will ask the questions, who will answer them, and who will take responsibility for acting on the results. So I will end on a call to action to all of you individually and to the London Center for NTD Research as a Collective. Please commit to doing all you can to building sustainable research capacity in NTD endemic countries. I offer WHO as a partner in the process and would be personally glad to work with you in this endeavor. Thank you very much for granting me the honor of delivering this talk today and many congratulations on the center as celebrating its eighth anniversary. I look forward to hearing the rest of today's talks.